Okay, so in this video, we're going to be creating an infographic in R. Um, and an infographic is just putting multiple graphs or plots um, on a page. Um, and over here, you can look and see a much, much earlier version of me going through the syntax to um, eventually get it to how I wanted it to look. So before we begin, if you haven't already done so, install the uh, smoothing method package because we're going to need it when we get to the kernel density plot of our syntax. So once we've done that, we need to define our parameters, which is what we're doing here in this first line of syntax. So we have def.par, and we're pushing all of this into that variable. So we're saying par, or our parameters, and then open print no.readonly equals true. And what we're telling R here is that we want R to give us the default commands and options for the parameters function. Um, there's also a way where you can specify um, the commands that you want um, within your parameters function. And if you wanted to, to do that, you would just put false and then list out the ones that you want. Um, but yeah, so we're pushing all of that into this def.par variable, which we'll be referencing um, down here. Next, we need to import our data set. Um, if you've watched the previous videos, you already know how to do this. Um, but very quickly, we have the path where the data reside. Um, we're telling R what to do with this path. We're telling it to read the CSV file that lives right here. Um, and we're pushing all of this into the variable test underscore data. Next, we get into actually specifying um, what we want everything to look like within our infographic, how things are laid out. So we have layout. Layout is a command that just divides up the space. Um, we're dividing up the space within the matrix. Um, C open print, you're going to see this quite a bit. Um, that is just def defining a vector within R. Um, so we're going to be defining quite a number of vectors throughout the syntax. Um, this is actually telling R where within our matrix we want our plots to be plotted. So we're saying that the first plot that we have, we want it to be within column one. And then the remaining two images that we have, we want it to be plotted within the second column um, within rows one and two. So we're going to have one image um, in the upper right hand column and one in the lower right hand column. Now we get into over here specifically which image we want to be our first. Oh, we skipped a line. Sorry. Um, so line number eight parameter. This is telling our where we want our bar plot or whatever plot we're using, how far we want it to be from our margins. So we have par or parameters, um, margins equals defining our vector. And these um, I learned are not interchangeable, but they denote spe specifically the um, location of the margins that you're trying to um, manipulate. So here we have the margin for the bottom, the left, the top, and the right. And we're telling R how far we want it to be from those margins. So we're saying that we want it to be three units away from the bottom, two units from the left, three units from the top, and one unit from the right within its box. Next over here we have OMA, this is outer margins. You don't have to include it. I included it um, to help out with the spacing a little bit, um, but you can certainly take it or leave it. 
Um, and once again, I'm doing the same thing over here that we did over here. Um, so yeah. Next, we have the syntax for generating our bar plot. Um, if you've watched the previous videos, this should look somewhat familiar. Um, so we have bar plot, um, open print table. This is all of the information that we're going to be putting in our table that is going to be used to generate our bar plot. We're pulling our data from test underscore data, and we're going to be using this specific variable within that data set. Um, this is going to be the title of my bar plot. This is the Y label, and this is the X label for the respective um, axes. Next, we're going to get into the parameters for the second plot that we're generating. So just like above, we have our margins, and you can see that the margins are slightly different. Um, I had to play around with these quite a bit um, so that you could actually see the plots um, on the screen um, so that you don't end up with something like this. Um, and then we specify what we want our histogram to look like. Um, we're pulling data from test underscore data. We're going to be pulling this variable, breaks equals 50. This is telling R um, what we want the intervals to be for our x-axis within um, our uh, histogram. Um, x-label, y-label for the axes. This is the title. Um, this is a bit of syntax that you can leave off if you just want R to figure out what the limits are. Um, I was trying to align the um, scale of my y-axis on both my bar plot and histogram, which is why I changed this. Um, and these numbers right here are the range of what I want my y-axis to span. And over here, just like in the two above, we're specifying the parameters um, for our last plot, which is going to be our kernel density plot. Um, so, and as you can see, you can make the numbers go below one. So I have a couple point fives in there. Um, it's really just playing around with it to see what's going to fit on the page and look the best. Um, now we're calling the library, we're calling the smoothing method command from the library. Again, if you haven't installed this package, this won't work. Um, this next bit of code right here is us specifying the information that we want within our kernel density plot. Um, so starting right here, um, we have the data set, the variable, the levels of our variables. So um, in my data set, um, D4 could take on values of one or two, and um, those values um, correspond with Dallas and Austin, respectively. Um, I'm pushing this information into the factor, um, or this is going to Com comprise my factor, and I'm going to call that factor office.x, office.f, excuse me. Um, next, we are actually um, generating the information that's going to be in our um, density plot. So this is the command um, to create that plot. These, this is the data set. These are the variables that we're going to be calling for that data set. And this is the label for the x-axis. And that's our title. Here we get into specifying what we want the legend to look like. So this is saying that um, we're going to be creating a legend using the factor office.f and we're going to use the levels of this variable that were or this factor that were specified above um, and this is defining the color that we're going to use 
So we're pushing all of this into call.fill. And then here we're telling R that we want this color to show up within our legend. Um, the levels within our legend are going to be the levels that we've specified here. Um, locator parentheses one is just telling R that we want to be able to choose where that legend goes and this all is in the legend command. Last but not least, um, you can tell R that you want it to put all of your plots into a PDF. So what we're doing here is we are specifying the path or where we want our PDF to end up. We're telling you that we want a PDF and that we want it to develop that PDF for us. Um, and then here we're saying that we want to use the parameters that have been pushed into this def.par command. And so we're gonna highlight all of this and then hit run. We've got a beautiful sea of blue, which is always great when you're working in R. And over here to the right, you can see R has generated um, everything you told it to generate within your syntax. And then over here, you plop your legend down. And if we go into our file where we've, um, or the path where we directed R to put it, we can see that it is created infographic nine, which is what we named it. It's a PDF and there it is. So there you go. That's how you create an infographic within R.